All right, welcome to the 12th grade physics circuits diagram video. Today we will be doing circuit diagrams. We have two simple objectives today. The first is to be able to match circuit elements with their respective symbols, and then also to be able to draw a simple circuit diagram. This will be a real quick video. We just have a couple of easy objectives to do. We should be able to accomplish in about 10 minutes. So first we're going to ask, what is a circuit diagram? Well, if you look at the circuit that I have pictured in front of you right here, uh, you can see it's pretty simple. There's just a battery, a lamp, and a switch, and it's really easy to understand. However, most circuits are far more complicated than this, and so we need a better way to represent. For example, if you have a circuit that's looking like this, there's no way that you can draw a picture of something this complicated and have it make sense to anybody. However, using a circuit diagram, we can take something that's complicated like this and turn it into something that's much more simple. Now, as you look at this here, this should still look fairly complicated. However, I think we can all agree that this looks a lot more simple than that colorful tangle of wires that we had before. And there should be some things that you recognize already. For example, if we look over here, you should see a battery. And then if we look over here, we see things like capacitors, symbols that we, or things that we've already looked at in class. Okay? This is also an example of something that could be a light bulb. And you see another one here and all over the place. So the purpose of having a circuit diagram is to have a more clear way to draw circuits using symbols rather than pictures. And so let's look at some simple examples of this. A wire. Okay, first we want to see how to represent a wire. And it's incredibly complicated to represent a wire. I'll give you an example right now. To re represent a wire, we have to draw a line. Okay, so I was lying about the really complicated part. The thing about circuit diagrams that you want to make sure of is that circuit diagrams tend to be at right angles. So what we will not see is we will not see a wire that's drawn all curvy. Wires tend to be drawn as straight lines. Good. Next we're going to learn how to draw a battery. A battery looks like a wire coming in with a short line and then a long line next to it. This would be one battery. Now, batteries have positive and negative sides, and in this symbol we can see that too. The positive side of the battery is going to be the side that is longer here, and then the negative side is going to be the shorter side right there. Now, you don't have to draw this, but what you can simply do to remind yourself is you can put a little plus sign on this side and a negative sign. If you have three batteries hooked together, as we do in most of our labs, this works the same way, except for you're going to do three batteries right in a row. Same idea is that the right in this picture will be positive, and the left side will be the negative side. Good. Light bulbs you could draw very complicated because they are, they've got screws and tips and, and all of that. We can simplify it simply by drawing a circle for a light bulb, and we're going to put the letter R in it to represent that the bulb is round. A little bit later, we may see another light bulb configuration, but I don't want to show you that right now. A capacitor is also pretty simple. A capacitor is two conducting plates, and so all you do is draw two vertical lines next to each other. Easy. Notice that there's an insulator in between a capacitor, which is why we see this as an open system, not a closed system. Looking right here, we can see that there is nothing in between the two conducting plates, so no charge can move from the left side to the right side of this capacitor. And then at the very end, we have a switch, which we haven't seen a whole lot of, but a switch would look like this, and it makes a lot of sense because the part that's angled up could be closed to make a closed loop or open to make an open loop system and kill the power to all the lights. So let's just finally look at some examples here. I have two examples of circuits as we may have seen them before with a battery and two light bulbs. And in the bottom, as you can see right here, I've also included a picture of a capacitor right there. 
So let's take these and turn them into circuit diagrams. I'll do the first one and then I'll ask you to pause this video and take some time and try to do the second. So we have one battery with the positive side pointing up. So I always like to start with the battery. So if I come over here, we have a battery with the positive side up and it's connected to two light bulbs. Now the tricky thing about this is that here you can see that the wires kind of snake around. That makes it a little bit difficult to see what's going on. What we're going to do is we're going to want to draw these wires as straight lines. So I'm going to come over here and then I'm going to have one light bulb, R, and it's connected directly by one wire to another light bulb, R. And then it goes back into the battery. We should already know that we know that the electric charge comes out of the positive side of the battery. And so if we look here, the charge would be moving this way through the picture, and we know that the charge would be moving this direction through the circuit diagram I have just drawn. Okay, go ahead and take a second and look at this picture right here. Pause this video, take a moment, and try to draw the circuit diagram for this more complicated circuit. Good. Now that you're back, let's see how it's actually going to look. In this case, we still have a battery pointed straight up. And it's connected to a light bulb. Now the light bulb that I'm going to be talking about is the bottom light bulb right here. If we look, we see that this loops around on one wire back into the battery. So what I can do have one light bulb right there. The part that I have just drawn represents this part of the circuit right there. Now I have to take care of this light bulb and this capacitor. If you notice, they are on sort of one wire. So I'm going to come over to the right and draw one wire with the light bulb and the capacitor on it. I'm going to branch off here. One light bulb. And the capacitor is connected along the same wire. So the circuit that I have just drawn represents the circuit at left. This was a far more complicated example. What I recommend that you do now is take a minute, pause, go back, look at things that were confusing, and then come ready to take a quiz next class.